Thank you, Concorla. The object of the question, Concorla, is to establish from the Minister, will he uh, review the 21-year rule for Defence Forces personnel? Uh, the Minister will be aware that um, many women and men, in my view, are prematurely being discharged from the Army after 21 years' service. And generally, that is a situation where uh, young adults, are certainly in their 30s, have had high mortgages, childcare costs, and established family costs are, are being prematurely discharged from the service. Thank you. Uh, Minister, would you share with us the, your views with respect to how you're going to address this situation? Great. Well, um, let me just read something into the record and then I'll answer any direct questions you might have. Um, the unsatisfactory age and fitness profile of the permanent defence forces uh, was an issue uh, of serious concern during the 1990s. Uh, and was the subject of severe criticism by a series of external reports, mainly Pricewaterhouse consultants uh, and the Efficiency Audit Group. Uh, one of the key uh, areas identified for urgent action by the EAG was the development uh, of a manpower policy or person power policy, uh, perhaps we should call it, uh, um, with an emphasis uh, on lowering the age profile of the Defence Forces. Uh, the, EGA, uh, the EAG uh, report, uh, report was accepted by government in 1995. In an effort to alleviate the situation, the government had already decided in 1993 to enlist personnel on a five-year contract basis, following consultation with PD4. Uh, in, in 1997, agreement was reached with PD4 on a new manpower policy for the Defence Forces. This policy applied to personnel enlisted after the 1st of January 1994 provided that the service for uh, private soldiers uh, would initially be for five years, with the option to be extended to a maximum of 12 years, subject to meeting standards of medical and, and physical fitness and conduct. Longer periods of service were envisaged for non-commissioned officers. In 2004, PD4 submitted a claim under the Conciliation and Arbitration Scheme for a further review of the terms of service, applying to personnel enlisted in the Defence Forces after the 1st of January 1994. The set of criteria was agreed with PD4 to provide longer careers for those who enlisted post 1 January 1994, uh, while continuing to address government objectives of having an appropriate age profile to meet the challenges of a modern defence force. The, the criteria uh, required that any person re-engaging after 12 years' service must be able to continue to operate at their current uh, level, both at home and overseas on an ongoing basis. Re-engagement is subject to the uh, individual soldier meeting specific criteria in regard to uh, physical fitness, uh, uh, medical category, successful completion of, of military courses of instruction, service overseas, and so on. Where we're at now is um, um, PD4 have again looked to try and have uh, essentially the 21-year rule, which has come from a 12-year rule, which came from a five-year rule previously, if you like, extended again because people who came into the Defence Forces you, uh, in, in, in 1994 are reaching close to the end of their contract. Um, there is a, a very active and very constructive discussion going on within the conciliation infrastructure within the Department of Defence. Uh, my understanding is that they're reasonably close to agreement. There are one or two outstanding issues. Uh, we're trying you. to be as flexible and as reasonable as we can, while at the same time um, uh, ensuring that we do actually have a, an appropriate benchmark in terms of age profile within the Defence Forces. Well, I, I welcome the minute. Minister's commitment to demonstrate flexibility. I'm sure the Minister will agree that continuing in a stable employment into your 30s is generally a good thing. And uh, when being discharged from the Army uh, in, the late, in your late 30s uh, and not having any employment prospect is not good for your family, where you live and, and your community. Minister, there was plenty of significant flexibility offered to the chaps in the mess, the com commandants. They, they got an extra, an extra number of years. I think they were got an additional two years. And if you wanted to use either psychiatric nursing or the flexibility around Gardaí, um, there's a significant uh, flexibility to continue on in service beyond a retirement age. Just for your benefit, um, maybe have some assistance to compare some of our NATO friends. 55 in Malta, 55 in Finland, Belgium, 56, Cyprus, 52, and the Aussies are 60. Thank you. So I, I'm delighted you've acknowledged that we have the best fitness program available to establish whether or not, um, Club, and, and I think that if somebody's fit to work, should not be discharged prematurely if they are fit to do their job. Thank you, yeah. Minister. One minute. Thank you.
I think it's. I think uh, first of all, thanks for those comments. But can I? I think it's important to put this into context. Right? Given the the active role the defence forces have been playing abroad in recent weeks, what we're talking about here is frontline soldiers, privates and corporates, people who are jumping in and out of MOAGs, uh, people who need to be fit, adaptable, strong, uh, and at the peak of their uh, physical and mental fitness. Uh, for their own safety and for the safety of the troops around them. And I am not going to compromise that principle. Okay, so let's just be clear on this. If you, if you progress from, from private to corporal to sergeant, this is a non-issue, essentially, because there aren't any rules uh, around. Uh, what the 21-year rule is, is applying to is people who have remained as frontline soldiers, essentially, um, uh, uh, in an effort to try and reduce the age profile and to ensure that we have a constant inflow of new personnel um, you know, in their 20s coming Thank into uh, the, the ranks of frontline soldiers. So, of course, we will try to show some flexibility when, where, when and where appropriate, but there are, there, um, being a soldier is different to being a, a member of a lot of other institutions in Ireland because of the risks that they expose themselves to and because of the demands in terms of mental fitness, flexibility and physical strength and so on that we require of them to perform their duties. Minister, I'm not suggesting that we should introduce a, a bogus uh, fitness programme in order for people to remain within the service. What I'm asking you to do is that if somebody is fit and has to go beyond the current arrangement of 22, 21 years, that you would let them progress uh, maintain employment. There's no suggestion that we're asking for something inappropriate to be introduced. All we're asking is for common sense to be considered. Um, there, there is no doubt that you ca could actually intervene immediately because there is a difficulty with respect to how you're managing the resources <coughs> that are there because there is no promotion from corporal to sergeant. And yet you're, 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 you're promoting and accelerating a natural wastage of critically important skills in areas that you will never build up uh, by new intake and you're losing significant resources uh, with, with respect to the expertise uh, that has been built over uh, many years uh, in, in that speciality. I would ask the Minister to report to the Dáil today when he expects that review will have had concluded and when he can re-engage with Peter Fora to you. make some uh, degree of, of an announcement around the flexibilities that we both envisage are fair and just. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I think the flexibilities that are being discussed are around uh, maintaining levels of expertise that have been built up over time, uh, while at the same time uh, trying to ensure that, that frontline soldiers are of an appropriate age. Uh, and I think there is a balance to be found there. Uh, we're not really talking about deputy people in their 30s here. Uh, if you have a 21-year rule and you join the army at you know, 19 or 20 or, or in your early 20s, you're talking about people in their 40s here. You're talking about people in their 40s, not their 30s. So let's just... Sorry. Yes, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, so, so uh, um, what I propose to do here is I propose to let the, uh, the infrastructure and the defence forces that is actually there to resolve issues like this that has successfully resolved this issue in the past when there was a request by PD4 to do so, uh, to actually finalise its work. I think it would be inappropriate for a minister to wade in politically uh, and to, uh, uh, to, to tell people what the outcome should be. Uh, I would like to think that our uh, conciliation and arbitration systems in the Defence Forces can work here, both Thank for PDFORA and, um, uh, um, you know, and for the Defence Forces generally. Uh, I understand that the um, uh, PDFORA's national time, conference is happening in a couple of weeks' time and I'm going up to talk to them there, but I don't think it's appropriate for me to engage until we get an outcome from the conciliation Thank process, you. which should happen in the next few weeks.